Testing, one, two, three. Okay, so, um, I wanted to make a quick video, but, um, Just briefly addressing last week's I actually episode. have to, um, I actually have to make it not so quickly. Because I have to, like, record the, the voice track separately in Audacity and later splice it together with a still with video dub in order to upload it to YouTube. So you'll probably get this sometime in October, but I'm actually recording it on the 26th of September. And, um, I'm supposed to be asleep like an hour ago. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably, like, let me log off of everything. And, um, the reason why I'm going to sleep so relatively early, it's 11 o'clock on a Friday night, is because, um, in the morning I have a doctor's appointment because, um, I'm getting my feet looked at because I had a fall about a couple months ago and it hasn't healed fully yet. And, um, only after reading up on it, probably should have gotten it looked at a lot sooner because, you know, apparently the bones can heal inappropriately if they're fractured or broken and there are a lot of really small fine bones in your feet but um it's not a problem as long as i walk in slippers i don't feel any pain or discomfort but um in general you know um it's it was just like part of a whole string of um accidents or bad things that happened and you know it was the whole general trend of just not having enough enough what you call that energy or motivation you know to deal with um things that happen day to day and part of that is watching too much television so um it's not television itself but it's dramas and the problem with drama is that drama is based on antagonism um i'll quote from an article i'll hopefully link it in the video which says uh, we need to look at the repetitions and the stories we tell ourselves and at the process of the stories rather than merely their surface content then we can begin to experiment with changing the filter through which we look at the world start to edit the story and thus regain flexibility where we have been getting stuck one of the reasons why um i started writing uh more um prolifically a couple years ago is in order to get myself on stuck because I realized that the thinking I wanted to have was not the thinking I actually have. So I had to sort of like create stories for myself to um to read to sort of um generate the thinking that I wanted. But I didn't carry it to the um to the degree that I should have. It wasn't as effective as I should have because I simply didn't spend enough time on it. And it's a lot easier to just um watch something. In general though, I prefer to watch anime than dramas. I know there, there are anime dramas as well, but most of the anime I watch is apparently different from what most people watch. Um, I tend to watch things that would um, encourage me. Um, the most encouraging thing I can recommend offhand is Hunter x Hunter. The reason why I found it encouraging is because of how well written it is and how the focus of the series changed over the course of the series. And it's really inspiring to me to see such high quality writing which um, develops the characters and also develops the world as well. So you gradually get to see more and more of the world of the Hunter x Hunter universe and um, you know it, it feels more and more real as it's expanded. To me it never really like jumps the shark or like gets totally ridiculous because they, to they slowly ramp up um, the deviations from you know what we expect in day-to-day -day physicality so that and it's always um self-consistent so that was very well written to me um I, I watched the older series all of the older series um and i um i still have to watch over um last mission because i tried to watch it which is a movie I think that's the only Hunter at Center movie right now but you know, um last mission is um well really well animated um, the basic plot is something that is um, interesting. Uh, I wouldn't really want to give it away. Um, but And I can't really even talk about it because I happened to watch it at a time when I was really tired anyway. And I was in a hot room with like um, 31 degrees Celsius which translates into maybe 100 degrees Fahrenheit or something. And just approximating um, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. 32 degrees Celsius is... Um, 32 degrees Celsius is body temperature, I think, which is 98. So maybe not 100 degrees, but close to it. Um, I don't really know. These are just off the top of my head. I don't want to do it in my head, even though I can. It's a simple formula. 
but um see yeah, my mind is already trying to calculate it i want to get back on track and stop nerd sniping myself as xkcd would say and i actually wanted to just do a short video about being thankful and putting yourself in the right frame of mind um because the frame of mind that you have you see humans have like a lot of glitches or a lot of flaws compared to what you might think would be ideal so when bad things happen we tend to sort of get stuck in looking at things from a from a uh, fearful point of view rather than um rebunking off of it but when good things happen we quickly get acclimated to it and we need more good things to happen in order to feel good so that's the reason why people can get addicted to stuff because you're addicted to something that makes you feel good you have to keep going back for another fix and it's also one of the reasons why you can easily spiral downwards because um when one bad thing happens it sort of like gets blown out of proportion on a physical or logical level your brain actually adjusts to like this fear based mode so you can um you can develop techniques to bring your brain back into a faith based or a more realistic mode a more absolute mode rather than a fear based mode because fear based modes are supposed to be very short and temporary but um it's very easily for the physiological effects of fear which would be like things like um stress or stress responses fight or flight response but also the freeze response to be overwhelming your autonomic nervous system can actually be reprogrammed but it takes intentional effort it's um just like it's not reprogramming in in terms of um loading software into it it's reprogramming in terms of reconditioning or retraining habits because you always have to manually do some work in order to bring your mind back to where you did it so because you need to manually do it you can create um artificial routines which reinforce this so um lots of things exploited these artificial routines um like video games exploit them because video games give you that sort of like um balance between fear and reward or fear and faith because well good games at least do that you you get into a flow state where you understand the system and you're better at dealing with it so you get better and better at it um you know that's one of the reasons why i play very few games but i would play a few good games over and over and the thing is i don't think i've ever met a great game the closest thing to a great thing to game to me is probably chrono trigger and even that it's not great in all aspects um there's a lot more that I would have liked to see than with the Chrono, the Chrono Sister, um, Chrono Trigger system, and it's sort of a pit, uh, pity that they didn't make any sequels or anything. Where's my phone ringing? <coughs> Hold on. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I guess. All things work together for good, you know, once you're on a positive path, things just add up. It's partly how you take them and partly the, um, I had a word for it earlier. I think it's, I call it the, the impersonal system of information something. Yeah. Before ISIS became a bad word, I used to use, um, the abbreviation for a lot of things because ISIS was actually the name of the planet that was, um, discovered after Pluto in the um echelon universe echelon is a game by um i think it was by access um access doesn't exist anymore but access used to be a country uh company around the time of electronic arts maybe it was electronic arts i published it i don't know but anyhow um it was a space simulator slash um adventure game yeah you could um play it in simulation mode or you could play it in adventure mode and it had this long convoluted story involving space spirits and stuff i had it on my commodore 64 it was notable because it had this thing called a lipstick which was a voice activated control but it was also notable because it had terrible terrible graphics like very basic wireframes but i mean this thing sold for like 40 dollars us in like 1990 something's money so i mean maybe 1980s money i'm not sure probably 90 something though 
um commodore actually basically destroyed their their own cash cow though um the, the actual Commodore motherboard at the time that they stopped producing it used to cost $35 to manufacture and they sold it for a full Commodore 64 for over $100. And the stupid people were complaining saying that the disk drive costs more to manufacture. More to manufacture. Well, yeah, the, that's how economies of scale is going to work. Or rather, I would say how length of production is supposed to work. Not even really economies of scale because it's not, it, it wasn't a matter of the scale of their production that lowered the cost. It was a matter of the redesign over time, so it was a it was a scale of time rather than a scale of quantity. It is true that if you produce a lot more, you can um, amortize overheads, but it's also true that if you produce the same thing for a long time, you can reduce the cost over time by taking advantages of technology. And technology is not devices; technology is human beings who have idle time to sit down and say, "Hey, how can I make this cheaper?" and so um designing for cost was always a thing with commodore the problem is that the upper management was just insane i mean not not clinically insane but suicidal to the company um that company could have could have at least um lasted as long as atari because atari only went out of business in 2013 actually but um they could also have um expanded and become a competitor to IBM if they had the foresight to do so even even from like even now <laughs> if they if they wanted to it, it's not wouldn't be an overnight thing and obviously IBM has gone out of the um device making business they've sold that off to Lenovo but what does IBM do now they do um consultancy and what do people need now people need um small businesses and home office equipment and who wants to play, pay Microsoft tax when you don't have to? Um, the basic requirements of productivity are still around. If you can have a machine that can produce a PDF, then you basically have solved what productivity needs because you just need a PDF and then you could take it to any sort of printing services. Um, yes, some people own printers, but not everybody does and not everybody wants to. Uh, and if people really look at the cost of wanting a printer, it may actually be better to take a PDF, go to a copy shop and get it printed at the, at the copy shop. And um, that would also create even more business in the economy. So if you really look at, um, at costs and benefits, it makes sense in a way not to own a printer. But it makes sense to be within, um, to have an affordable coffee sh copy shop nearby. I mean that's my personal opinion there and um, it all depends of course on how much the copy shop co um, charges but if they charge too much you can just you know print and do it yourself I mean that's basically what I would do um, in terms of photography and, and other types of ink and stuff I remember getting pictures taken and they used a dye sublimation printer I was like isn't this expensive and they say well yeah ink is expensive too isn't it I was like, yeah, that's true. Everything's expensive, but the question is, are you getting the qualities that you want? Dye sublimation gives you a um, much higher quality um, in terms, and it also gives you that photorealistic gloss a lot better. Um, I just mentioned all of these things offhand, though. Um, what I really wanted to say is that I didn't intend to meet anybody through YouTube, but I met a lot of people, and um, it was good. So um, I'm thankful for that, and. Um, a lot of the plans I had, you know, totally went sideways, totally other things happened. I can't say that everything that I've done has been directly beneficial yet, but I must say that every project that I've taken the time to work on has given benefits. The benefits have often been surprising, and perhaps the benefits of doing work. When I say work, I mean actually setting out and doing a project which you think is hard and you might not succeed at doing. That's what I call work. Um, I don't mean going to work as work in this case. I'm not talking about being employed. I'm talking about um, pursuing projects. Um, as being beneficial. Um, yeah. But I can ramble on about that later. I'm already at like 15 minutes. I'm probably going to just um, not publish this or something. I don't know. Um, I don't really like to publish these rambling rants because I think they're they're sort of like waste of time. If I listen to them and take out the points, I can reduce them to like three or four minutes and save you a lot of time. Um, but 
just to let you know um i still don't have any video capture hardware stuff but um i'm getting closer i know i could get a dazzle and check it into the system but i don't want to use the system for anything heavy because i want to um build to other systems and um use one as a server one as a client and do more client server type projects internally and um publish a bit more about that type of work because uh, when I did it before, I, d I just did it like to see if I could do it, but I didn't really put any effort into making like tutorials out of it or out of the most of the stuff I did. I didn't really think that um, there would be a market for the tutorials that people actually want me to explain what I did. But um, I think there, there are good reasons why you should do tutorials because the methods I use are slightly different from the methods most other people seem to use. And also um it will allow me to work on my speech writing and brevity which i'm good at anyway in a professional or academic context but i'm not actively within those contexts now anyway so um it'll be good to keep those talents sharper to keep them refined so there are benefits immediate benefits to me and long-term benefits i guess if i could do com tutorials commercially that would be good um i'm not eligible for like youtube profit sharing monetizing thing directly but um I can get around that later on in the meantime um, you can get around anything by founding a corporation in the meantime um, in the meantime there are some projects I want to bring tr bring to commercial in order to sort of force myself to do some business stuff that I've been putting off some for maybe 20 years or something 15 20 years yeah that makes me sound like i've been around for a long time huh yeah but remember i'm never older than 23 because 23 is the oldest age that anybody can be nowadays any older than that and you're like can't get a job because you're too old for it you know, unless you go to stanford in which case you can be 25 and get a job but 26 and too bad you're too old <laughs> yeah fuck that world we're living there. <laughs>